Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at ADF. Uh, we looked at ADF many, many moons ago, and given uh, some of their most recent releases and uh, some kind of interest in sort of these classical navigation systems that are quickly being wiped out, I said, you know, this might be a good time to just kind of review uh, sort of what it's about, kind of how to use it again, just kind of make it simple. So for us, uh, we're going to be sitting here in lovely uh, Georgia, uh, was poking around the United States, attempting to go ahead and find where they actually still have ADF stations. I actually really, really, really was struggling to find any. Uh, fortunately for us, though, uh, when we go over to Georgia, we're actually going to be sitting right down here. Uh, for those of you who are DCS fans, you probably recognize this region. We're going to be using this little handy-dandy uh, ADF station called GALI, G-A-L-I. That's 525 Delta Alpha, and there is our identifier. Things to remember about ADF and NDB is this is the NDB. The ADF is the thing that points on it inside the airplane. All this is going to do is announce where it is electronically, and all we're going to do is tune in to have an arrow point where it is electronically. One of the greatest things about ADF is it's always going to be heading in the direction that it's coming from. Now, that's kind of a neat little quirk, and you're like, what do you mean? Well, let's take a look. So we know that the frequency on this thing inside of our aircraft is going to be 525, so we're using the G1000 here in order to make it a little bit easier here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the ADF a button, bought this one, I'm going to go to 525, it only takes a second, I'll go ahead and set it, 5, do, 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 and I expect not to be able to detect it. ADF is not like VOR in that it is a line of sight, but there are pretty serious limitations as far as its ability to actually detect things. So go ahead and push that, PFD, uh, PDF, I should say, PFD, now let's go to ADF, and notice there's nothing that tells us where we need to be. That's okay, because uh, once we get airborne, we should have a little bit better of a time being able to actually acquire it. <clears throat> So we're gonna go ahead and make our way up into the air here. We know uh, from where we're taking off here, this is uh, the lovely air base. It feels weird like not being in a Sukhoi 25 or something like that for the purposes of this flight. But hey, I'm not complaining. We're gonna go ahead and take a right and we're gonna be sort of making ourselves a kind of a northwest sort of angle here in order to kind of facilitate our detection of that ADF signal. So we're gonna pop up in the air and the first thing we know when we get the ADF is you're gonna notice that the needle is gonna start going crazy on you pretty much right away. Just to cheat us just a tiny bit, I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these and then I'll come swing in the general direction and there's the ADF noodle. Noodle? What's that noodle? Don't you mean needle? Yeah, you know what I mean. All right, let's go take a look. First of all, no cheating. All right, cheating disabled. Cool. So we have this little blue line now, and this needle now is pointing us in the direction of the NDB. That's all it does. Uh, there's no special course information in here. There's no special distance information. There's nothing along those lines. It's just a nice little blue needle that kind of gives us a heads up as to where our interest is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the plane. I'm going to go ahead and put my nose right on it just like this. Give myself a couple wax of trim here, make it a little bit simpler for me. And we have a bit of weather today, so I would not be surprised if we're going to get bounced. One thing I will do, though, is I will flip on my automatic pilot just to simplify things a little bit here. There we go. Nice. So what I'll do now is I'll use my little heading hold here, pop it over the needle perfectly, just like that. Aircraft is going to come swinging in here, and now the problems will start. Uh, you're sitting there going, well, what do, you, what do you mean? Aren't you on course? Yeah, of course I'm on course. Uh, the problem is, though, is I have this nice little crosswind that's coming basically right out of the west that's actually pushing me to the right. If you look really, really careful, you see where this little uh, pink diamond is? This pink diamond indicates where the aircraft is actually tracking across the ground. So we're not actually trying to center this needle. Notice the needle just jumped to the left. It jumped to the left because we're being pushed to the right. So to compensate for this, if you're on a G1000 system, what I actually like to do is I will move the aircraft left and get the wind diamond here to be exactly on the top of this needle here. Uh, once you do that, actually, I think I've done it a little bit too. Uh, I'm going to count it. I'm going to count it. The aircraft is now traveling directly towards the NDB. If I didn't do it this way, the further I go towards that station, the more I would be blown this way, the more the needle would shift to the left. So now notice my needle is no longer facing the direction that I want it to go in. However, because my wind diamond and the needle is centered, that means it's not going to be wiggling around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up time a little bit. And you can see very, very clearly how even though I'm not pointing where the NDB is, the aircraft is still tracking towards it because this needle is holding still. Now, you notice it did a little wiggly wag there, and that's a very, very typical of these kind of older stations. They tend to do that. Now, here's where things are going to get interesting to us. Well, let's go ahead and return to normal time here, and we'll go ahead and level off at 4,000 feet here. Boop, just like that. Now, here's where things get fun. As the aircraft picks up speed, the effect of the wind becomes less. It's not that there's less wind, it's just that I'm going so much faster that it doesn't push me as far off course. So in this case, we'll go ahead and set the aircraft for, I'll go ahead and drop the fuel power bound just a teeny tiny bit. We're gonna go to a really, really, really quick cruise here. 
check all my needles, make sure everything looks good. 2,500, 2,600, there. Now notice my ADF is starting to shift the other way. The reason it's starting to do that is we're starting to get, first of all, very close to it. Second of all, as we're starting to approach where it is, um, it's gonna get a little bit more sensitive. And since we're accelerating, we're now actually going a little more to the left, causing the needle to now shift more towards the right. Uh, nobody said this would be easy. Again, this is a little old school navigation here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cheaty cheat real quick here and I'll get us a little bit closer to the station. Whee! <laughs> I wish I had this capability in my airplane, that's awesome. And we'll get a little bit closer to the station. You can see after about 10 minutes of traveling, we've actually shifted quite a bit here. We're no longer on course. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a little wiggle and we're gonna try to get that diamond to be centered back on the top of this needle, meaning we're approaching the ADF directly. Now I've heard a bop back over here real quick. I'll go ahead and uh, swing back a couple pages. Uh, we don't need to do system controls. Uh, you'll notice I'm a little off course, which isn't bad given the fact I haven't been cheating at all in that regard. But you can see the NDB is a uh, slightly off course. Remember, it will not point where you're pointing because you're going to be going towards it because of the wind pushing you to the right as you get closer to it. So what we'll do real quick is we'll do one of these. Gotta love modern technology. It works great. Gets these planes going real fast. And we'll actually back up just a tiny bit. And that works perfectly for me. So we're just about to cross the station. So what's gonna happen is we know we're gonna cross the station because this needle is gonna suddenly go whoa and freak out. Now let's say after crossing the station, we wanna proceed due west. Now things are going to get a little bit more interesting because not only are we going to be compensating for the wind, we're going to be compensating for a needle that's pointing backwards. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a second. So the needle's going to do its little happy dance in a moment. There it goes. And we're immediately going to pull ourselves to the west. And there we go. Delightful. So there goes the needle, and now we're going to be pointing towards the west. So now this is where having a visual is actually kind of helpful here. So that's the station itself. I'll zoom in a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see what we want to do. But we want to travel away from the station. So you notice now that that needle is now pointing directly towards uh, basically behind us because we're now driving or flying away from the station. So what do we need to do to make sure we're heading west? Well, that's where things get a little bit more interesting because this tail of the needle that we have right here now represents the reverse course from it. So if this tail of the needle is pointing towards west, hypothetically, we're actually flying west away from that station itself. Notice, by the way, that our little wind triangle has disappeared. So in this case, I noticed that the needle is, uh, we're a little off course here. So I'm noticing uh, we can go like this. So watch what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and order the airplane to go towards the needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a five degree rotation here. It's gonna be a little mind boggling. Wait, you see this in action. There we go. Now I'm gonna speed up time a little bit. Look at the needle. You're gonna notice because I'm pointing towards where the needle is on the wrong side, the needle is now pointing directly at west. So now if I take my airplane and I snap it back to its original desired course, check it out. You'll now notice that I'm exactly facing west away from that needle. So you can see that we have to basically point ourselves this way in order to make the needle swing that way. If we point ourselves this way, the needle swings the other way. We're basically swinging into our own needle. So in this case, you can see very clearly that we're actually flying away perfectly from the station on a westerly course. Now you're probably saying, well, what if you want to make it 240? I'd say we're going to have to go back to that ADF and get ourselves all centered back up. That's not to say we can't do it. Let me show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order up a south course. go. There we are. And now what's going to happen is we want to make sure that we're, our needle is at 240, meaning we're at a 240 bearing away from that station. So what I'm going to do is bring my aircraft due south. I'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit to make this effect more, effect, uh, more uh, obvious. And you're noticing because I'm now heading south, I am forcing the needle, the tail of my needle to be shifting this way, which is getting very, very close to my 240 that I wanted to fly away from it. Once I'm within five degrees, I'm just gonna go ahead and order my airplane to go on the original heading. Pop it to 240 again. And now you'll notice that by about the same time I get there is gonna be the exact moment that I am now flying away from that ADF station at my desired heading of 240 degrees. So you can see, even though we don't have all the fancy bells and whistles, as long as we have a fairly reliable RMI, which is essentially what this is, we can figure this out. Now, if you really want to blow your mind a little bit, if I zoom out a little bit, you're looking at this going, um, okay, what did you do there? What did you do there? Not much. So I'm gonna go up to menu real quick, go to the map settings. So we're gonna go ahead and change this from heading up to north up, press enter. And if you take a look now at my lovely map, keep in mind, we're not dealing with things like magnetic deviation or anything easy like that. Let's go ahead and make my menu go away. 
you can now see that I've done exactly what I claim to do, which is to now be on a 240 course away from that particular position. So you can see, whereas we were coming west, we're now on the 24. If I'm going to come due south, I simply turn the plane this way and fly that way. So as you can see, uh, ADF, even though it's ancient, it's still usable. I can still work with the tool in order to successfully do things with it. Um, like I said, as long as you are kind of keeping mental a check of everything you are and where you are relative to everything, you can actually use these to fly approaches. You can use these to do all sorts of crazy, really, really cool things. But other than that, enjoy.